Right. Yeah. Have you ever used a computer? No, you know, that, that's one of the things about, about prison life is, um, that I tried to convey in my writings is that when, you, when you're here, it, time stops. And the world, you know, goes on without you, including the technology, because I came to, you know, I was arrested in 1977, and I've been incarcerated ever since. So that means, you know, I've never uh, owned a personal computer. I don't even know how to work one. I've never used a cell phone, uh, a CD player, a DVD uh, player, uh, uh, iPods, uh, these Apple things. Uh, I haven't even used the metric card. I mean, t I'm, I'm technologically illiterate. Even the typewriter I have where I type my letters on and I type my journal on is just an old-fashioned, it's an electric typewriter, but it has no special real features. It's one of those old electric typewriters. I don't think people use these anymore. They went out in like the 1980s or something, you know. Play a royal typewriter? Oh, no, it, it's... Um, it's Smith Corona? Well, similar to that, yeah, similar to that. But, um, you know, so like, I mean... <laughs> I'm like really lost when it comes to technology. I, I wouldn't even know anything about driving a car now and computers and, you know, it's uh, uh. so. So what happens to, to inmates who are here for, say, 25 years, 30 years and they get out? Yeah, so. that's, that's a, you know, Dan, that's a good question because that's one of the, the difficulties of uh, uh, getting out of prison after, after so long a time is that uh, you know, the world, you find the world has passed you by. You have to start learning things all over again from scratch because you say, ah, you know, it's all, it's all different. Yeah. So if, if, you were, if you were running the uh, uh, correctional facilities, mm -hmm. would you change things? Well, I, I would actually, if, they had, if I had the, the money and the resources, I would definitely, you know, personally, I would try to make the uh, things more modern so that men that are getting out of prison, you know, they have an idea how to, how to work certain things and, uh, you know, what's available out there, you know, that you'll, you will need to kind of survive on. I mean, back then, like, for example, applying for a job, when you'll get out of prison, they're going to want you to have a job. Now, I remember when you had to fill out, a, you'd go to a place, you had to get a job application, you had to fill out a resume, everything was done in longhand. I, but nowadays I hear that people fill out their resumes on computer and just zip it right back to, I mean, I would be like, you know, I would have to painstakingly go from place to place, knock on every door, you know, no, we don't want help, we don't want, and, and travel, maybe go for months without finding any work where nowadays people, if they, they don't have their computers at home, they could just, you know, do all their stuff right from their own house. It's kind of like mind-boggling. I'm, so, I'm living in a different era, you know, a different century almost. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, that's yeah. certainly true. I mean, yeah. technology has, has advanced yeah. Uh, yeah. In, incredibly. I mean, kids today, 10-year-olds mm -hmm. uh, know more about computers than most adults. Oh, that's good for them. I'm, I'm, you know, I wish I had a computer. I'd do, I'd do a lot with it, you know. But so so prisoners, inmates, they they they're kind of behind the times here because they're not exposed to uh, modern, yeah. modern uh, activities. Well, they they have you know you have most of the guys that um, lack a uh, high school diploma, so they're encouraged to get the GED. You know they take different classes in preparation for that, which is good because you need that. And I always encourage the men, yeah, you got to go for your education. That's very important. But basically, it's just. Um, uh, getting your GED, and once you get that, there, there really isn't much else, you know, to 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 strive for. Can you go for more for college uh, courses here? Oh, uh, they had they had college um, many years ago. In fact, I did receive a two-year college degree uh, for with the New York State you know, University system, but um, uh, Governor Pataki had stopped all the college programs. Uh, many years ago and you know gutted all that so there really isn't anything left they're trying to start colleges back but it's it's a lot different you could take like one course that type of thing where at one point uh you know a while back we had prisoners going to full-time college if they qualified and it was very you know rigorous you had to really apply yourself you had to really you know, do your best just like anyone uh, going to college now what about uh, an inmate who doesn't speak english uh, are the translators here? Yeah, well, the, uh, they do offer, you know, English as a second language, and I guess that's a, that's a handicap and a struggle. Yeah, you do have men occasionally that very limited English, yeah. 
Because in prison, you know, that's the thing about prison, you have men coming in from all walks of life, you know, and, uh, you know, some guys come from other countries. They came to America to start a, look for a better life and ended up getting into trouble. In fact, in my journal, I've written about some of those, you know, individuals, uh, you know, changing the names and so forth, but um, how they came, like one fellow uh, that I knew for a number of years, he, he transferred on, but, uh, you know, we used to talk a lot, and he was in the mental health block, so when I'd visit there, I'd, I'd spend time with him. And uh, he had come up with his family from Honduras to seek a better life, ended up falling in with a gang in uh, Jackson Heights, Queens. They did some silly robbery, he ended up in prison, you know, now he's going to be de he's facing deportation when he's done with his time. But you think, wow, you know, uh, you know people come you know, to America to look for a better life and end up... In, in, in prison, and then have their language barriers, yeah. Is, is that the, you have a chapter called The uh, Devout Jew? Yeah. Is that the uh, individual you're talking about? No, that was someone else, yeah. Can you, can you tell me a little bit about him? Okay, I'm trying to remember. You know, one of the things I, I don't, I seldom do, is to actually reread my own journal writings. Usually when I'm done with them, you know, I'll send them to my friends, and I'll keep copies just to have, like, for a backup. But uh, I don't even really, I'm so busy, my days are so busy and full, I really don't even stop to reread some of my older entries. I go for, for m years without even rereading them. But there was a, a fellow who was, a, you know, again, you know, when you're in prison, you meet people from all walks of life. So uh, this particular fellow, I, we, we got close and, you know, sharing my faith with him, he was sharing his beliefs with me. and. Uh, he also left the country. I think he was from Colombia. Right. Yeah, he was right. He was from Colombia, and uh, he was definitely, he wanted to go to Israel. He, he had uh, some influential rabbis from this area uh, up in the Catskills trying to help him out with the State Department or immigration to try to get him to Israel, get his release from Israel. But uh, I think he had ended up uh, going back to Colombia. He didn't want to return to that country. According to your writing, because right. he, yeah. yeah. he's probably lost at this point. Yeah, yeah, he lost ev his everything and has his own issues to deal with. Yeah, he didn't want to go back, you know. Whatever his situation was, I don't know, but, uh, yeah. Mm. I think we have. Want to stop it? Okay. David, I have do a lot of trouble. Uh, children today, and you know, you you, you read, about, read about gangs. You know, people who think going to prison is yeah. is, is a big deal, and, right, and yeah. it's, it's a notch on their belt. Yeah. What is what is your advice for for teens? Wow. Well, that's. Um, I think a, a lot of uh, young people are not always weighing all the consequences of their actions, and they're not always picking their friends wisely. Uh, a lot of guys that I met in prison over the years could swear up and down that if they weren't with so-and-so at the time or if they weren't with this group at the time that they never would have come to prison, that they never would have committed a crime and uh, you know peer pressure and so forth and other influences have a lot to do with it. Even the media sometimes is, makes uh, you know bad behavior look glamorous and uh, they never tell you of the consequences so uh, a, lot of, a, a lot of men come into you know, do things on impulse, especially young people, and the consequences are devastating. The same thing with like driving while intoxicated. You know, you can do it 20 times and nothing can happen, and on the 21st time, you know, you smash up your car and lose your life. Uh, if you would ask that person if they thought they were going to get an accident before they got in that vehicle and, and lost their life, they would, you know, have said no. And that's the way it is sometimes even with young people. They just get in over their heads and they can't get out and, uh, so it's, uh, it's kind of sad to see a lot of ruined lives you know, coming into the system. Have you seen a pattern, a, a certain uh, psychological pattern that you see in, in, in inmates? Well, a lot of guys wanted to be rap stars, but they ended up being prison inmates, so something went wrong somewhere. I think a lot of, uh, I know it's, you know, you can't put everything into one basket. I'm sure guys have a lot of trouble, you know, growing up in the city and everything, but uh, uh, 
you know, they needed to stay in school and get their education. They needed to pick their friends wisely. They s stood out on the street corner and fell out with the wrong crowd and uh, ended up in prison, yeah. Now, looking back, uh, if, you, if you look at the events leading up to your incarceration, do you think mm -hmm. if, if you had um, counseling or if you were on medication, do you think that would have helped at all? Uh, well, I don't know. I, what I learned from my own, you know, personal experience, because you know, when you're in prison, you do it's, it's like a place to do a lot of introspection. You know, the time you're in your cell at night, the door closes, and uh, a lot of a lot of inmates, it's a time when you're you're alone with yourself, which can be kind of scary.